Nissan, and our Ti. And we're going to show you how a boxcar averager can work in conjunction with a gate scanner to extract the ringing portion of a square waveform. So a boxcar averager's only purpose is to generate what's known as a boxcar waveform or a square waveform. And within that square waveform pulse, otherwise known as a gate, it takes the average output of a signal and extracts information from what would normally be a noisy background. Now, what we've set up today is simply an experimental simulation using a signal generator in order to generate a signal that we can extract a waveform from. Most normally, this type of experiment would be used in conjunction with a laser or other process that would produce a very fast signal in amongst a lot of analog noise. And you could use this process to recover that signal. So I'm just going to go over all the basic inputs uh, and modules that the boxcar is composed of. So you can see the entire boxcar module is in a metal frame, but the only modules we're concerned with today are the gate scanner and the gated integrator and boxcar averager. So if we first concentrate on the gated integrator and boxcar averager, you can see that we have five sections. Rather, six sections. <laughs> so the first section is the trigger section. All the trigger is, is a waveform that is generated, or a signal that is generated, that allows the boxcar to generate the gate signal. And it is adjustable through one hertz up to 10 kilohertz. You can also use an external trigger to generate the same signal. This is continually adjustable through the rate adjust knob, allowing the user to select any multiple of the frequencies between 1 and 10 kilohertz. Next we have the delay. The delay is the amount of time that is put in place by the boxcar before the trigger and gate signal is actually generated. And this is also continually adjustable from 2 nanoseconds up to 10, mil 10 milliseconds or up to 100 milliseconds using the multiplier knob. The multiplier knob is a potentiometer that goes through a 10 scale, multiplying the delay multiplier by whatever the multiplier factor is. Also, there's a 25 nanosecond delay built into the discriminator within the model. So that has to be taken into account when generating a delay. In addition, there's the width option. The width option actually controls the time width of the gated signal that's produced. And this is also continually adjustable by the user using the knobs in the front input. Next is the signal section. In the signal section, the sensitivity of the output amplifier can be adjusted so as to multiply the output signal by a particular factor. For instance, right now the sensitivity is set to is it point 0.2? Oh, right now it's set to 0.2 volts per volt. So that means for every 0.2 volts out of the amplifier, or for every 0.2 volts into the amplifier, one volt gets put out. So it's basically like a scaling multiplier of five. Next is a switch that controls the input filter. And as you can see, this can be set to a number of different levels to reject unwanted noise coming from the signal that is being attempted to recover. The input offset allows the user to compensate for unwanted DC offsets that are included in the signal that one is trying to obtain. The next section is the averaging section. This is an exponential moving average that the user is allowed to set the samples for. The reset button allows for the resetting of this average output, and the average output BNC gives the output to the user through a BNC cable. Next we have the input and output section. The trigger portion of the input section is where the input from an external trigger would go. The signal input is, of course, how one would get the inputted signal into the boxcar. Under the output section, we have the gate and signal outputs. The signal output BNC is passed directly from the signal input BNC. And using the gate together on an oscilloscope, one can plot the direct relation of the gate output and the signal input together for timing purposes. The busy output can be used to trigger an external oscilloscope to align the trigger of the boxcar with the trigger of an oscilloscope. The last sample output is used for a user to perform a shot-by-shot -shot analysis of an input signal, rather than looking at several samples of the exponential average. Moving over to the gate scanner module, you can see that there is a total of six sections to this as well. First we have the mode, and you can see that there's a reverse, stop, and forward mode. 
This controls the direction of the scanning, or it puts it in stop, which would stop the scanning. Next, we have single or repeat. The single mode would only scan through a complete time as set by the scan time one time, whereas the repeat mode continually repeats the scan time. The scan time knob allows the user to set the amount of time that the waveform is scanned from. This can be adjusted from 10 milliseconds up to 6 minutes or 300 seconds. Next, the start position denotes at what time in the signal that the delay multiplier will begin to scan. And the scan width sets this width of the delay multiplier. Below, we have pin left out and x axis out. The pin left out can be used in conjunction with a chart recorder in order to give directions to a pin that would then draw the signal. But because this is the year 2012, and we don't see any chart recorders nowadays, <laughs> we're going to use the x-axis out, which provides a continuously, continuously ramped 0 to 10 volt DC signal in order to draw this output onto an oscilloscope. One thing that's important to note is that when the gate scanner is in use, it overrides the delay multiplier that comes from the boxcar averager. Now, at this time, I'm going to turn the demonstration over to Rick so that he can explain what the experimental setup is and what exactly it is we're looking for. Okay, so um, today we're going to have a presentation of how the postcard, the postcard average works. So basically, we just have a, a, square, a, square, wave, uh, a square wave signal and um, we have. So basically, basically what we do with actually the the gate scanner and the gate integrator is that the, um, if we didn't have the particular gate scanner, we would actually be pausing all the time and actually averaging. But the gate scanner takes care of that, so we actually we can actually scan through the signal, average, average the average that actually part. For example, every like here, every thirty nanoseconds, actually. Pause. You average those 30, 30 nanoseconds, and then uh, and then the next one, the next one, and then like 30, 60, 90. Actually, you actually average it, and then scan it all that as as you go with the because of the gate scanner and the gate integrator that you actually set. I just explained the M, the M of experiment, which was to actually um, extract the ringing signal from the from a square wave using the Bosca Averager uh, and the Gate Integrator and the Gate Scanner of the Bosca Averager. Now I'm going to actually give the, the, the voice, I guess. I'm going to, I'm going to, pass, I'm going to pass it to, to Ramesh Vasan that will explain the hookup of the actual experiment. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Ramesh Vasan and I'll walk you through the uh, wiring and the demonstration of the experiment that we are going to do that is extracting or viewing the uh, ringing signal that we see on a high frequency square wave. So the first component of our setup is a function generator. Uh, we set the frequency to 100 kilohertz and the amplitude is 0.5 peak to peak. So the output from the function generator is connected through a BNC to the input of the box core integrator. Yeah. And the next thing is to connect the view the signal in the oscilloscope. So we can take the sig uh, signal directly from the signal output, which is again the input signal that we give into the box core, which is delayed by two nanoseconds. And in order to override the delay multiplier in the box core averager, we connect the control voltage, it's seen here, the control voltage output is from the gate scanner is connected to the external delay control. So this overrides the delay multiplier in the front panel and this knob here, it's inactive. The scanning process of the whole signal is taken care of by the gate scanner now. The x-axis output from the gate scanner, as you can see, is connected to the x 
input of the oscilloscope to view the uh, extracted signal and the average output from the gator uh, box core averager it's given to the y output and the oscilloscope plots the or extracts the ringing signal based on our gate settings and gate okay. so now we have automated the uh, the scanning process of the signal and we have extracted the ringing signal as you can see from the oscilloscope and the input signal is seen in this oscilloscope you can again see the ringing signal uh, here so what are the settings now first uh, as we said the delay multiplier like the delay multiplier here is inactive the gate scanning is taken care of by the gate scanner the average we just view this single average and the width of the gate is set to 10 nanoseconds and as you can see if we increase the width uh, what we are doing here is like increasing the gate width and we are going over the uh, ringing part and we just extract the square wave as you can see it's changed to a square wave now and again when I decrease the gate width we again extract or see the ringing signal from the square wave uh, and this LED here uh, it's now saying scanning we are scanning the signal and we are scanning it in the forward direction in a repeat mode and yeah was to extract the ringing signal from the uh, high frequency square wave and using the box core average and the gate scanner and we were able to do it and thank you everyone for watching the